With that comes rumors, I heard one, that you were born a man. She's classified as intersex. She has unusually high testosterone levels. And here's Samantha. She's pushing. Because of her size and speed, at that point, she was subject to gender testing. But here she goes. Samantha is on her way once again. So, yes, they all said it was discriminatory, but the discrimination was necessary, reasonable, and proportionate. She made me look effortless. Once again, cast a Semenya. Testosterone is the primary reason that male athletes outperform female athletes. What is it about Castor Semenya that makes people so uncomfortable? In our culture, testosterone is often seen as the essence or the biological essence of masculinity. And that's sort of a cultural assumption and many scientists also buy into that. But what's interesting is testosterone is involved in much more beyond gender and much less than the gendered things we often connect it to. Testosterone levels in humans actually have not been linked to athletic performance or athletic success especially. So athletics competitions have long tried to police who counts as a woman using all sorts of measures that in effect didn't catch a single cheater. So I think those of us who have looked at the longer tradition, which includes many feminist scholars and queer scholars and intersex scholars, see this as sort of just the latest iteration of people trying to get sex right, but who don't understand sex. Under medical therapy for uh, intersex people who uh, have the same conditions as Semenya has and have a female gender identity is to lower testosterone precisely as was done, uh, as mandated by the IAAF. So we can see between the last regulations and the current ones changing numbers of what is the right amount of testosterone. So there's no one objective, natural, true point at which we can say, aha, this is the cutoff. Because we know that testosterone levels aren't a cutoff for sex or gender. And Young pushes on again, and she's breaking away. There is no response now from Prepshin. There's an assumption that you know, men have testosterone and women do not, when it's the case that men and women have differing levels of testosterone. And this idea that, you know, there's a true range for each gender is false. And so much of what has happened to Castor Semenya has been about people's expectations of her as a woman that she does not look appropriately feminine, that she's too masculine, and all of these things are then used to explain away her success. Some of the best women in the world, and Semenya destroying Neil Saba to boot, who runs the season's best at 155.86. There's the sense that there's some unfair biological advantage, that she's actually more man, and that is why she's winning, which also I think really plays into a stereotype and an idea that women are not as strong or powerful or as fast as men. That there must be something about Castor Semenya and her masculinity that is giving her an edge over her other female competitors. And of course, this is where we also have to look at race, right? Because there's a way that Black women particularly have been masculinized and understood as not feminine enough, especially in comparison to their white female counterparts. Testosterone itself isn't linked to athletic success um, in any robust or even weak way. It seems really clear that the people who are being publicly outed as a part of this as having DSDs or intersex variations or conditions tend to be brown or black women from the global south, from these rural or low income backgrounds. And what's really important and valuable is seeing, for example, South Africa and before India and other countries speak out in really important ways and valuable ways, supporting their athletes and also pushing back against what seems to be a very clear pattern of targeting, especially when you look at where athletes are coming from, which is all over the world and where administrators are coming from, which seems to me to be very restricted in region and class and race, ethnicity and so on. Yeah, I'm late. There's nothing I can say. Yes, I'm late. Yeah, I have those guts. Being late. But Castor Semenya is somebody who, through challenging all of those standards, has proven herself to be a formidable competitor. And she is somebody who I really think 
that through her story and through her life is making great strides to challenge our assumptions and understandings of both gender, sex, and race. I heard one that you born a man. What do you have to say about stuff like that? I have, one, I have no idea about that thing because I haven't heard that thing. Who said it? And I don't know. I don't give a damn about it. 